My mama married my stepdad Pete when I was 10, but he and his daughter Lacey had lived with us since I was 9. Lacey is a year younger than me, for reference. Lacey is not a good person, and I'm not sure why, since Pete is a good person. I've never met Lacey's mom. Lacey would say stuff like, You, you look and sound like a trans guy. She also used autistic as an insult, and once, when my friend was teaching me ASL, Lacey saw us and said, Why are you flapping your arms? You all look like stupid kids. In middle school, Lacey made fun of me often, and Mama and Pete would say it was just Lacey's sense of humor, and she didn't mean any harm. She stopped in high school because our parents put their foot down with Lacey, but Lacey still made fun of kids at school, and she hasn't changed much since middle school. It's why Lacey and I have no relationship, and I only see her as Pete's bio kid, not my sister. I'm getting married next month, but my fiancé and I have been planning our wedding since 2020. We were engaged in January, but we decided to wait to have our wedding until after the global issue and some other personal events. We confirmed all our bridesmaids and maid of honor since the beginning of this year. Lacey asked to meet at our parents' house and showed up in this extravagant white dress while saying that I should tell my bridesmaids to get similar dresses because she wanted them to match the maid of honor herself. But again, our wedding is in a month and Lacey hadn't even asked me about being a bridesmaid, so I laughed out loud because I honestly thought it was a joke. I realized Lacey was serious and I told her there must have been a misunderstanding because my best friend Aurora is my maid of honor. Lacey started saying some vile stuff about Aurora and that she was supposed to be the maid of honor because she's family. I told Lacey that she had an ugly attitude and that I would never see her as my real family because she acts like people are below her. Lacey started yelling at me, but I told her I wasn't dealing with her and left. My fiancé and friends say that Lacey was seriously entitled and I don't owe her to let her be my maid of honor, especially when she's always been nasty. But my parents said that what I told Lacey was cruel because even though we didn't get along well for most of our lives, Lacey reaching out to be my maid of honor is a sign she wants to have a bigger role in my life. Mama and Pete said I was wrong when I told Lacey I don't see her as my real family, and I'm implying that a stepfamily can't be a real family. I didn't, and still don't see my statement to Lacey that way, because it was about Lacey's attitude and not her being a stepsister. But since Mama and Pete both saw it that way, I'm not sure if I was out of line. Am I the idiot? OMG, she's coming to your wedding in that dress? Well, who's ready for a toast? Break out a fine red wine and be careful not to accidentally spill any, or the entire bottle, on her dress as you pass her a glass. Not the idiot. Best of luck, OP. We should open a business. Clumsy guests. For a small fee, plus food and beverages, one of our trusted employees will come to your wedding and accidentally spill wine on the people like your stepsis. OP, your mom and stepdad are enablers to Lacey, which is one reason she's so entitled. Nothing she did during that presentation was an olive branch. She's not only entitled, but she shows an apparent lack of insight. She honestly thought she was a maid of honor without speaking about it with the bride. She just assumed. Also, a maid of honor in a white dress where she wanted other bridesmaids to wear white as well? Dense as a brick, or maybe just trying to hijack Opie's wedding for her own and pretending to be the bride on that day. Lacey is not trying to have a bigger role in your life. She's trying to upstage your wedding. I'm sure your mama or stepdad would love to pretend you're all one big happy family, but that's just not true for you and Lacey, and for a good reason. She's hugely entitled and you should consider uninviting her, or having a plan with security to throw her out if she wears that dress or creates other trouble. Congratulations on your wedding. Update. Thank you for the feedback and advice, people. We've taken many of your common suggestions and hired security. They know to keep an eye out for Lacey and they will have a leave if she tries to make a scene or arrive in that white dress. When I married my soon-to-be ex, she had four bio children, three boys and a girl, and two adopted daughters from Colombia and South Korea. We have one child, male toddler. In addition, my two, daughter and son from my previous relationship, live with me full-time as their mother doesn't care much about her custody time. I've known my soon-to-be ex's Sally's bio children every two weeks for the past four years. Her two adopted girls live with us as her ex doesn't want anything to do with them as he has the daughter he always wanted. Sally lives in her mother's mother-in-law suite for now with all of her children. Sally wants to leave her adopted girls with me as part of the divorce proceedings as she too doesn't want them as she feels she now has a bio daughter and has no need for them anymore. She is adamant that she should not have them as the adoption agency cheated her. The Korean one is not Eurasian as she'd hoped, but half Vietnamese and South Korean. 
I don't want them as I've never been a father figure and the girls still talk about her ex as their dad despite no contact for so long. I simply can't afford more children than what I already have. I reported her to CPS when she mentioned she would rehome them if I didn't take them. I called CPS on her and they contacted her ex-husband's workplace as he works with children. He is temporarily on unpaid leave while being investigated for neglect. Sally will now be investigated too. In the meantime, CPS has custody of all her children. My son is with me. She's called me every name under the sun and doesn't understand why I won't take them as I have space in my house and experience with a girl as I have a daughter. She says I overreacted and we could have solved this in a different way. Am I the idiot for reporting to CPS? Those poor kids. They adopted the girls and then had a bio daughter so they no longer need or want them. Who are these awful people? Kids aren't dogs that you rehome. I guess you had no other choice and I don't know what else you could do. Not the idiot. What a circus. You never adopted her children and she can't just leave them in your care. You know she doesn't care for those children anyway since she's wondering why OP wouldn't just take them since he has the space. Taking in not one but two kids is the same as making some space in your home for an extra sofa. She deserves to be investigated and punished by CPS not only because rehoming her kids after she gave birth to a daughter is extremely cruel, like kids are some collectible items that you discard or exchange when you get a copy, but also because I don't think she's even doing the bare minimum to take care of them. Two adults taking care of nine kids is crazy and she seems to lack the love and dedication you would need to be capable of raising that many kids. Everyone's the idiot here. Eight kids between the four of you and then you two decide to bring another one into the mix. These poor kids, you're all crap parents. Kids aren't things you can just get rid of because you finally got the one you want. Everyone's really skimming over the fact that he had another bio child with her when they already had eight children. Unless they're very, very rich, don't have to work and have all the time in the world to spend with nine children, including a newborn, in what universe does that sound like a good idea? I feel sorry for all those kids. Breeder logic, man. Agreed. Everyone's the idiot here. The background. My SO and I are in a serious relationship. Today is our four-year anniversary. We've purchased a house together and hope to move in within a year. My SO has a son, pre-tween, from a previous relationship. The co-parenting arrangement is pretty flexible and generally on amicable terms. The father has custody of the son three times a week. The event. A friend of hers passed away last week. The only time I've heard of this friend was last year. When it transpired, she'd let him put a motorbike in her name and the local DMV let her know the license was expired. This triggered a week-long mourning period where she even physically spent time with his family, father, mother, etc. My request of the deceased, biker guy, the wake involved gathering at the deceased's home and drinking to his memory. She was evasive as to the exact nature of their relationship, can't I have a big heart? But I can surmise it bordered on the romantic. Everyone has bonds from previous lives and grieves and processes in their way. The problem. The son's father lives close to where the wait was held and it happened to be a visitation day. Imagine my surprise when I get a phone call that she's home. Not only that, but that the driving arrangement involved ex driving to and driving my girlfriend's car and son to girlfriend's house, ex-girlfriend's driving girlfriend to her house. While I'm glad my girlfriend did not drive after drinking and made it home in one piece, I quickly told her that this did not sit right with me. My girlfriend knew I was idle at home, 15 to 20 minutes drive. Her point of view is that I'm turning an act of kindness by her ex into a scene. My point of view is that I'm seen as the spare husband. While I understand that co-parenting involves a certain kind of communication frequency, I'm not okay with this level of intimacy. My girlfriend is also aware of this, while I accept that she's a package deal, I expect that anything unrelated to the son is exempt from the arrangement. This is also compounded by the fact that my girlfriend's father also refers to the ex's mother as the mother-in-law and is constantly bringing her up in conversation without intending any malice. She's also one of his primary care physicians. All of this feels like I'm just a transitory partner. Am I missing something here? Am I the idiot? So, you're jealous that your girlfriend's ex, the father of her child, drove her car and their son to the girlfriend's house, and the ex's current girlfriend drove your girlfriend home simultaneously? Do I have that right? If so, you are the idiot so much. 
Dude, he literally just drove her home. You should be happy they get along and co-parent well. You're overreacting massively. Insecurity is all I'm reading here. You are not wronged in any way but are making something out of nothing due to your issues. Chill out. You are the idiot. This is just about your weird insecurity. I am not okay with this level of intimacy. What intimacy? He just made sure his child was okay and helped out your girlfriend at the same time. Is she not allowed to have any male friends? You're suspicious of her very recently deceased friend. You're suspicious of her ex. Is there anyone she's allowed to have? Also, you sound very dismissive of her grief. A week isn't unreasonable. I lost a cat I'd had for four days and I grieve for longer. I'm a 47-year-old single dad of a 19-year-old young man who was born as a female. We lost his mom two years ago. He came out to us as trans three years ago and completed his transition just a few weeks ago. My sister is pregnant with her fifth child and is doing a baby shower gender reveal next weekend. The whole family is invited. Her baby is due at the end of July. I'm throwing my son a gender reveal party this Thursday. He always wanted one, ever since he came out, and now that he's officially a man, we're finally throwing one. The whole family is invited, though some won't come because they disapprove. We sent out the invitations two months ago. My sister told me she'd see about coming because she's heavily pregnant, and I put her down for a maybe. Yesterday, she called me fuming and said that many family members are actually coming to my son's party. Since this is the first family thing since the global issue, this will be the first big party, and then her baby shower will be an afterthought. I told her that I wasn't moving my son's party because everyone would still attend her baby shower on the weekend. She said, I am faking a gender reveal party, and I told her that was ridiculous. She said it wouldn't even be a proper gender reveal because he's not a baby. Then I just said that she could either come or not, her choice, but I'm not moving the date. Am I the idiot? So, she's mad that her fifth baby shower isn't going to be the first big family party post-global issue. A fifth baby shower wouldn't even happen in my family. They already have all the stuff. That's just kind of gift-grabbing. Not the idiot. Your sister is acting entitled. Maybe she will finally get that snoo or whatever that $1,500 bassinet thing is called. Your son's gender reveal party is almost more important than hers since she technically has no idea what gender her child will identify as. He's celebrating his true self, which is beautiful. I was coming here expecting to see another gender reveal scandal, but this is actually quite nice. Also, it's not like you put it on the same day. Happy gender reveal day to your son when the time comes. Your sister needs to chill. I didn't know people still had baby showers for a fifth baby. I've noticed people side-eye someone's second baby shower. Five seems like a lot. But the fact that most of your family is coming to your party is great. Party on. Kudos to you for being so supportive of your son. I have two daughters. My eldest, Megan, is 31 years old and my youngest, Jane, is 29 years old. Jane is getting married in the spring. Jane and her husband-to-be have decided that if someone is married or has a long-term partner, they may bring them to the wedding, but that anyone who is single or doesn't have a partner will not be granted an extra invite to bring a guest to the wedding. Jane said this is to keep their costs down. While I agree that this is a sensible decision, I've asked Jane to make an exception for Megan. Megan was upset and disappointed that she wouldn't be allowed a guest. In addition, both of my sons, 27 years old and 26 years old, are married or have a long-term partner as are the brothers and sisters of Jane's husband-to-be. My wife and I have offered to bear the costs of Megan's guest, but Jane and her husband-to-be have always declined financial help from his parents for the wedding or us. Megan feels she would look out of place as the only brother or sister who's without a guest. Most of my nieces and nephews that are adults are also married or with a long-term partner as well. I agree with Megan, and I don't think it would be a hardship for Jane or my wife, and I wouldn't have requested it be allowed when Jane gets married this spring. Jane's wedding is in three months, and they're preparing to send invitations soon. Jane and her husband-to-be said there would be no exceptions to the guest policy, even after we explained our reasons and why Megan was upset. Megan has been searching for a suitable guest for the wedding, and she will be disappointed if she can't have one. My wife and I don't think allowing one exception to their policy is a terrible suggestion. Wait, so she isn't even casually seeing someone, she just has to bring anyone, even a stranger, for the sake of it? 
You are the idiot for butting in on the guest list in the first place. Megan should have directly asked Jane and accepted the no. You have no part in this. A plus one would only make sense if someone won't know any other guests or at least seeing someone even if it's not a long term or marriage. Megan doesn't need a plus one. She's the idiot too. But if the older has to go to her younger sister's wedding solo, people might gossip and make assumptions about her being the oldest and still single. How would that look? Think of her poor ego. Dude, butt out your daughter's wedding. I'd also talk to my own sister and work it out as adults without a parent getting involved or even knowing about the request. Not your wedding. Not your guest list. Not your guest parameters. Megan should be able to suck it up for one day and not have some random person next to her. She will know people at the event. A wedding doesn't require attendees to move around as a pair. She can talk to other people and have fun. It happens at weddings all the time. Stop trying to fix everything for Megan. She's an adult. Let her be one. Not the idiot, OP. So, this exact thing happened to me. My longtime friend was getting married. Any partners of six months or more were welcome as plus ones. I asked if I could bring a close friend instead of a partner. This person was an acquaintance to them, but not close enough to have gotten their own invite. The bride gave me a solid no, so I went alone. I was really truly alone at a 250 person wedding. It was not great. I ate alone. I, 22 at the time, was the only single person under 60 there. I didn't dance, and the bride and groom were too busy with the groups of people that I never even got to greet them and congratulate them. I was miserable and left early. I stayed for two hours, but the reception was going on for another five or six. The bride got offended by that, and even after I explained, it ended our friendship because from then on, I was always selfish and didn't care about her. Jane deserves a great wedding, but if she isn't already aware, she should know how isolating that situation is for a guest. So no, Megan should probably not bring a total stranger, but there's also probably a compromise somewhere. Absolutely this. I agree that generally speaking, guests don't have a right to dictate the terms of their wedding invite. But it is generally considered polite to offer guests a plus one. So how is it not an idiot move to expect your guests to show up to an event where dancing will be held for hours without the option of a plus one? There will be so many slow and romantic songs and their sister is going to be left on the sidelines, basically. It stinks.